Let the church say amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. 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 I, I just wanted to give praises to God first of all. For he is the reason why we're here. Yes. I think I'll say that again. I'm going to come out this mad because I'm getting a little hot already. Let me say it one more time. I think we ought to give God the praise. <laughs>
right now. Let me let me let y'all get excited with me. Somebody, somebody open, open your heart to Romans 5 and 8. I just believe that's where it's at. I just believe it. Amen. That's where it's at. And everybody in here got a reason to shout right now. Amen. Not just the pastor, but everybody in here got a reason to shout right now. What did it say? But God what? But God did what? He loved toward us. Come on, somebody, look at somebody and tell them it was love that lifted me. Come on, tell them, tell them again. Those of you out there in Facebook land that are watching us right now, go ahead on and tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your children. It was love. That lifted me. The songwriter said, when I was sinking deep, somebody I wish I had two or three witnesses. Deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Can I get a witness here? From the waters. I wish I had two or three more folks that know you were drowning at one time. And you ain't got no problem being a witness and, 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 and telling somebody that you were drowning. Amen. That the enemy had you drowning. But from the waters. From the waters. Come on, come tell somebody. Why you your hand and tell them that from the waters, you lifted me in love. But God was commended his love toward us in that while we were what? Come on, help me, y'all. Yes, Somebody think they've been saved all their life, but you're a sinner right now. Amen. There's only two people in this world right now that save sinners and lost sinners. Can I get a witness right here? But love lifted me in you.
mindful of what the old church oh, well, did. Just a little call with you. Make everything all right. Precious God, our Father. It is one for it again with a bow down head and truly with a humble heart that we come before your presence on this morning. Calling upon your precious name. Thank you and repentance on our hearts, oh God. Thank you for all that you've done. Repenting for all the wrong that we've done. We thank you for last night's lying down, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that we had a bed to lay down and last night. Somebody laid on the bridge. Somebody slept. On the park bench last night, that cover might perhaps been on our newspaper, but you put a roof over our head. We had fine linen to sleep on and sleep on them, God. We realized that it's not because we've been so good or so perfect, but it's because of your grace and your mercy. Yes, yes. You watched over us, oh God, as only you, Jesus, as the robbers and the murderers were traveling up and down the streets on last night. You kept us safe. They didn't stop at our address, although they stopped at somebody's address, they didn't stop at ours. It was because of the blood of Jesus. It was on our door most of God that made the, the death angel pass over our house. And we just say thank you, Father, for being so good to us anyhow, even though we're undeserved. Thank you, oh God, that you have looked beyond all of our many faults that you have saw our every need. Not only did you see our need, God, but you supplied those needs. Yes, and we just yes, say thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for being so good to us anyhow. There's a lot of things that you have gave us that we didn't need. We just wanted. Yes, yes, but you have said in your word that if we delight ourselves in you, then shall you give us the desires of our hearts. And we delight ourselves in you, oh God. That's the reason why you blessed us with so many things. We just say thank you, Father. Thank you. You gave us life, health, and strength. You woke us up to see a brand new day. Fade away. A day that none of us have seen before and shall never see again. We realize that you didn't have to do it, oh God, because somebody laid down last night, same time that we did it. You didn't see fit to rise them up on this morning. But thank you for stretching forth your divine inner love, touching each and every one of us and waking us up to see this brand new day. Then, oh God, you gave us the full activity of our life. Reasonable portion of our health and our strength, you closed us in our right mind. We were able to go to our closet and decide what we were put on this morning. Yes, yes. We were able to go to the refrigerator and decide what we were eating or drink on this morning. We just say thank you, Father, for being so good to us in the And that you will remember us, oh God, that we endure through this pandemic. Remember the ones that have been affected by it, the ones that have gotten sick, the ones that have lost the battle of the loved ones. Would you please say have mercy, oh God? Realize, oh God, that you're not sleeping, nor do you slumber. You see what's going on right now. We ask that you will lead here in this land, oh God. But we have nothing that you declare in your word. We have humbled ourselves and pray you this. Turn from our wicked ways, and we are seeking your faith that you may come down and heal this land. That you may eradicate this pandemic, oh God. Yes. That you will raise people up off their sick bed. That you will raise some people off the bed of their death bed, oh God. That you will heal their body of aches and pain. Would you look in? Please, no God, those who are there behind prison walls and in jail out there, they might not yet know you in the part of their sin. And once again, oh God, don't please the Father, have mercy. Remember the ones in the hospital room, the convalescent homes, all over this land, this city, and this country, oh God. Once again, have mercy. Touch, oh God. You know you can't cool scotch your people. He's aching your pain, oh God. Regulate from a mind. Lift up, hung down heads and heavy hearts, oh God. Would you like the Lord? And that you will remember us, oh God, each and every one of us on the down of my week and my true report. Those who might have been watching my way of faith before this morning. Go into each and every home, oh God. Touch according to your holy will. Bless relationships. Bless children. Bless families, oh God. Yeah, 
it up a minute. Amen. Right. I'm going to turn it up. Amen. Amen. I already told y'all just a few minutes ago that since the Lord let me in here, somebody laid down the same time I did last night.
from the law. That's right. Amen. And I, I want to hear. Yes, sir. I, I want to hear. Amen. Because I need to hear. Yes, yes. I want to hear. Yes, sir. I got to hear. You're right. Yes, sir. How I got a witness? I can't make it without. I need it like a hard beat slot. Yes, sir. Amen. Elder Pride this time. Come on. Amen.
Y'all know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. Oh, for the battle is the Lord. Yeah. And he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh or near to meet David. That David hasted. I mean, he hurried. He, he got in a hurry. Yeah. And ran like I did this morning trying to get here on time. Amen. And ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence the stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead yes, yes. so that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him <coughs> and cut off his head therewith. Mm. And when the Philistine saw their champion was dead, <coughs> they fled. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Amen. Larry Gatlin was a crew country music singer. Yeah. Sang a song many, many years ago song said all the gold in California is in a bank in the middle of Beverly Hills in somebody else's name. He says, and if you're dreaming about California, it don't matter at all where you played before. California is a brand new game. I want to think about that last phrase. He says, it don't matter at all where you played before. If you're dreaming about California, California is a brand new game. Then the song says, Trying to be a hero, winding up a zero, can scar a man forever right down to his soul. That's what I want to talk about this morning. Trying to be a hero, winding up a zero, can scar a man forever right down to his soul. Amen. I'm sure we're all familiar with the bully in some shape, form, or fashion. In fact, I preached this sermon at one place a good many years ago. And after the service, a lady came up to me and told me when she was in school, she was the bully. When I was in junior high school, we had a new kid come to town, and he was a bully. And the one thing you know I've noticed about bullies is they always pick on somebody smaller than them, yeah. or they think is weaker than them. Uh -huh. They think somebody is their equal or better. They, they don't mess with them. No, no, no. They go to the smaller person or one they think is weaker. Well, this new kid that was a bully when I was in junior high kept picking on this little fella that was about a fourth his size. And I want y'all to keep that in mind now. And the little fella would keep looking up at him and shaking his finger up at him and telling him what he was going to do if he didn't leave him alone. One day in PE, the big bully was picking on the little fella. The little fella was looking up at him, had that finger going, telling him what he was going to do to him if he didn't leave him alone. And the big bully said, oh, you little wimp. You can't do anything. He took the palm of his hand and hit the little fella on the shoulders. The little fella went to the ground. But just like a rubber ball, he bounced right back up. The little fella caught Big Bully in the south part. And when he did, Big Bully went over. When he did, uh, keep this in mind now, little fella smacked Big Bully in the forehead right between the eyes. And when he did, Big Bully's head went back. When he went back, little fella jumped. And I mean, he cleared the ground a good foot and a half, maybe two feet. And his fist caught Big Bully in the chin, and when he did, well, Big Bully went to the ground. And faster than a bolt of lightning, a rocket, a jet airplane, a speeding bullet, and a speeding Indianapolis 500 race car combined, he jumped, and, and, and Little Fella knew where to put them knees on Big Bully's arm so Big Bully couldn't move his arm and he was pinned down. And Little Fella went to work on Big Bully. Uh -huh. and, and we went to cheering Little Fella on. And get him one for me. Teach that big bully a lesson he won't forget. Learn him something. Teach him something today. Get him one for me. When we started cheering, the well, little fella went to working faster and harder. So we started cheering no more. The little fella went working faster and harder. And that went on until Coach Knight heard the commotion, came over and saw what was going on, separated them, and then asked Big Bully, y'all want to put the boxing gloves on? Big Bully said, no, no, no. no. <laughs> he been trying to be a hero, trying to make himself look big. He wound up. A zero. And I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but I have. People want to try to make themselves look good yeah. by trying to make you look bad. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had that experience 
But let me show you how God works. Because he knows how to turn people around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This guy that was trying to mess me around hmm, met a real pretty young lady, and she just happened to be a Baptist preacher's daughter. And it just so happened that I was, at that particular time, was interim pastor of this church and later became their regular pastor. And she got him to come to church, but before he wasn't coming to church at all. Uh, he never said put in church. Uh, him going to church, it wasn't going to happen. But he started one part, she got him to start going to church. She got him to stop listening to Billy Graham. One day, and they had been coming to the church that I was at, and I, by this time I had become pastor, and they were starting to come regular. Tom Brennan? He came up to me just before service, and he says, Marshall, I said, after service today, my wife and I, because he married this lady, he said, we're going to take her parents out to lunch, but I want to invite you to come with us. And that was a change right there in itself for him. Before, uh, he, he wasn't going to invite me anywhere, especially to lunch. Mm -hmm. After the service was over, I got to think, you know, maybe I'm going to check my wallet and make sure I've got the money to pay for my meal. Uh, or I may have to, you know, try to find some way to buy out of this. And I checked my pockets, and yeah, I have plenty of money to pay for my meal. So we followed them to the restaurant, and after the meal, and I was reaching in my pocket to get my bill pulled out to pay for my part, he put his hand on my hand and said, no, 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 no. He said, I invited you out to lunch today. I'm paying for your meal. That shows how God can turn people around, because one night, we're listening to Billy Graham, this man got under conviction. The Holy Spirit got a hold of him and he gave his heart and life to Christ and made a complete turnaround. God knows who to put in your life, when to put it in there, yeah. and how to turn things around. Amen. Then, you know, there was a show off. Young man, young boy hits a certain age, and he meets a pretty girl about the same age, and gets on a bicycle. He starts doing the handstands, but then he gets one hand. <laughs> Sit on there and then he puts his feet and legs in different configurations and he's out there showing off trying to press this young lady and he crash into the bar <laughs> around the ditch. He gets up and grabs. In fact, way back yonder many years ago, there was a young man out of his first car that he owned late one evening and just gotten dark good. And he sees a real pretty lady walking down the street and he wants to stop off for a ride and turn around and look. He drives the steering, turns the steering wheel and he crashes into the Wooden barriers are over there and get them on the sidewalk. He comes out there real quick and runs off to a barrier to go talk to the lady. But he's trying to be a hero. Wound up a zero. So you know that feels old. Well, let me let me tell you this first. In the days of my youth, I worked in a service station, and they were service stations back then. We put the gas in the car, clean the windshield, check under the hood, check the tires, did all that. But a young man came in that station on a motorcycle. And he bought gas for his motorcycle, and I finished waiting on him, and it was almost back to the office when I heard a noise, and I turned to look. The motorcycle man was picking himself up off the ground. He'd done popped a wheelie and went too far over and fell over on him. He got on, got his motorcycle started, and took off. Just a few minutes later, we heard the siren. I ran out there to look to see which way the ambulance was going, and it turned and went the direction that he had gone. And I found out the next day that he'd got about a mile or so down the road popped another wheel. And this time somebody had to stop and call the ambulance to come and get him. And the ambulance wasn't able to help him. So they took him to the hospital. The hospital was not able to help him. They had to call the funeral director to come get his body and prepare it for burial and bury it. Wow. Trying to be a hero wound up a zero. And that falls on over into church life. There was a church that got without a pastor. And they called another pastor and asked for some recommendations. And he gave the church the name of one of his young associates. And I was present at the service. And they sent a delegation, this church did, to hear and listen to this young man. This young man's service was all about him. He tried to lift himself up and tried to impress that delegation from the other church with himself. And they walked away shaking their head. They did not call him for a pastor. Trying to be a hero, he wound up a zero. And then there was a pastor. This is an old, old story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it illustrates the point. Church came up with some hard financial times. He was in his office looking at the utility bills, trying to figure out how the church was going to pay those utility bills. Then this thought occurred to him. He said, oh, I know. 
The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All things belong to God. So I mean the electricity, gas, and water belong to God also. So I know what I'm going to do to fix this. He gets on the telephone and he calls the electric company. He tells the electric company, this is Pastor so-and-so at the such-and-such -such Baptist church. And I'm sitting here looking at this electric bill you sent. I want you to know the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All things belong to God. So electricity belongs to God. And since this is the Lord's house, the church is not going to pay for electricity anymore. Mm. The electric company said, okay. <laughs> then he called the gas company. He told the gas company, this is Pastor so-and-so at the such-and-such -such Baptist church. And I'm looking at this gas bill you sent. I want you to know... The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All things belong to God. That means this gas belongs to God. Since this is the Lord's house, the church is not paying for the gas anymore. The gas company said, okay. Then he called the water company. Hmm. He told the water company, this is Pastor so-and-so at the such-and-such -such Baptist church. I'm saying, look at this water bill you sent. I want you to know the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All things belong to God. Hmm. That means that water belongs to God. Since this is the Lord's house, the church is not going to pay you for the water anymore. And the water company said, Pastor, we're not charging you for the water. We're charging you for pumping it to you. Now pay us, mm. or we're going to stop pumping water. <laughs> Try to be a hero. Wound up a <laughs> hero. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want you to look at the text. 1 Samuel chapter 17. The Philistines have been against Israel ever since the Israelites came into the land that God promised them. They're gathered together and they're going to battle against the Israelites. The Philistines are on one side, the Israelites are on the other. Now come to verse 4. It says there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines. Champion implies to me undefeated. All right. And when I read this and I think about this, I cannot help but think about Grady Lee Nutt, who quoted Junior Sample on, from Hee Haw, as saying that Junior. Junior Sample, who was a big, strong, muscular fellow, said, no one person ever whooped me. Said, now four, done it once. And one-on-one, -on -one, Junior Sample was undefeated champion. Here's Goliath, he's undefeated, period. Never lost a battle. Goliath is a champion. And he comes out, and he's making a challenge to Israel. But I want you to notice something here in verse 4. Says, King James says his height was six cubits and a span. I have reference material that gives the cubit as 18 inches. I have reference material that gives it as 21 inches. And lo and behold, I was to another reference book and it gave the cubit as 22 inches. Taking the 18 inch cubit, that's a foot and a half, that's 12 inches plus six. That's gonna put Goliath at nine feet. Then it says, and the span. All reference material I have gives the span as nine inches. That puts it the shortest Goliath can be is nine foot nine inches. So I have reference material that gave the cubit as 18 inches and then put Goliath's height between seven and a half and eight and a half feet. Well, if the cubit is 18 inches and Goliath is six of them and a span, the shortest he can be is nine foot nine inches. And when you go to a 21 inch cubit, you got him at just a little over 11 feet. And when you go to a 22 inch, he is just under 12 feet. So you got a giant that is somewhere between nine feet, nine inches, and 12 feet tall. All right. Now, if you get wrapped up into a debate over what cubit is, this is, you're wrapped up in something that really doesn't matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What we need to know is Goliath was very, very tall, yes, sir. and he was a strong, muscular build. Well, what's the uh -huh. deal about that? Well, there are folks who say that the sons of God, over in Genesis chapter 6, were angels. They also say you cannot have giants unless you have angelic human relationships. Goliath has proved that's not so. Goliath was not the product of human angelic relationships. He was a product of human human relationships. Mm -hmm. And he's somewhere between nine foot nine and twelve feet tall. And I've seen some tall folks. Seven, eight foot tall. Mm -hmm. Goliath is tall. The sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 were the sons of Seth. And they saw the son, daughters of Cain and they went and married them and had relationships and out of some of them were some giants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now today we've got a pagan giant somewhere between 9 feet 9 and 12 feet tall. <clears throat> and if you read the text it will tell you all about his 
armor that he has on, and armor is important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When we go over the book of Ephesians, we're told yeah. about the armor yeah. we as Christians need to put on. Yes, sir. Then it says that Goliath stood and cried to Orange and Urgil. He says, why don't you come out and set your battle on the right? Am I not a Philistine? And your service to Saul? He said, why don't you pick out a man and let him come down? And if he fights with me and he wins, he said, well, we'll be your service forever. Yeah. But, but, but if I win, oh. and I'm going to win because I'm Goliath, I'm going to be the champion. Yeah. 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 you got to be our service forever. Uh -huh. The Israelites are scared. Even King Saul, because if you go back and look, by this time, God had already told Saul, you out. Mm. I'm through right. with you. You're not going to change. You're not going to get right. So I'm through with you. And they're all scared. All right. But if you read the text, you'll find there were three brothers in this camp, and they were also scared. But these three brothers had some other brothers at home, and yeah. the youngest brother showed up. Brothers immediately get an idea and a plan. Hey, we know how we can we can save face and make ourselves look big in the eyes of our fellow soldiers over here. And they start trying to deride the younger brother. You the one to come see the battle, to turn the attention to David. You know, people today they want to all talk <coughs> about the wrong somebody else is doing, and this is their thinking. If I can get people to look at their wrongs, Amen. I can go do my wrong, and ain't nobody gonna notice. Amen. And they forget that God says time looks slow, and He got a record of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And they keep trying to point the attention to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's All what right. my three brothers were doing. And they also kind of remind me of God I used to work with. You know, Pastor Archie was preaching a series out of Second Timothy chapter three on the sin that brought this nation to the brink of judgment, the crimes of our time, and one of them is boasters. Well, listen. This guy was a boaster. You've been fishing, so it eats. You caught one, he caught five. You caught five, he caught 20. Yours weigh two pounds, this weighs five. Yours weighs five pounds, this weighs 25 or 30 pounds. I'm 63 now. I just turned 63 back in June, and I'm still not able to, to have done as many jobs as that kid claims you've done, and I've done a number of different jobs. Boasting pride. Up there in the lobby, always talking about what he'll do to an inmate if the inmate gets out of line, just running off the mouth. One day he was running off the mouth, and one of the lady officers there said, what about yesterday when the inmate was doing all this wrong and, and you didn't say anything to him? Oh, I didn't see him. But you know, if I'd have seen him, I would have. Well, when you see an inmate way down there from the hallway, and you turn around, you're not going to see the inmate. <laughs> Hurting somebody. <laughs> Boasting. Get you in trouble. That's what these three brothers were doing. And they were trying to make themselves look good, <laughs> trying to be a hero, but they wound up as hero. But this youngest brother was named David. Yep, yep. And he heard Goliath's challenge. And he said, what's this? And they told him, well, yeah, he's out there looking for somebody to come fight with him. He says, if, if we win, then, or our man wins, and they can be our service. But if he wins, well, we got to be their service. And that man, you know, look at that dude. He's somewhere between 9 feet 9 and 12 feet tall. Uh -huh. And not only that, he's a skilled warrior. David said, so? Yes, Let me go fight this guy. I'll fight him for you. I'm not afraid of him. So they take David before the king. And David says, king, I'll go fight this guy. And the king says, wait a minute. This guy is an undefeated champion. Uh -huh. He has never lost a battle. Right, right. He is a skilled warrior yes. from, he got some cuts and bruises, mm -hmm. but he's never lost. Right. He, he won the battle. He's never lost. He is a skilled warrior from his youth, and you're just a young kid. And David says, let, let me put it in, in Anderson County, Texas, English for you. So, <laughs> King, ain't you ever heard? Bigger they are, harder they fall. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. Where's your faith in God? Don't you know God will deliver the wicked into your hand? Yes. yes. Well, 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 David, if you're going to go, you got to, here, you're going to need my army. David said, no, wait a minute, King. I can't wear this. This is just too heavy for me. I ain't tested this. Out. I, ain't, I ain't used to this. I got to go with what I know. So he took his armor off and gave it back to the king. And he went and he got what he knew. On his way to meet the giant, he stopped by the brook. And he picked him up five stones and 
put them in a little separate bag, all right? And then he hurries off to meet Goliath. And in my Holy Ghost field and Holy Spirit sanctified mind, I can just see Goliath standing looking down and putting his arms up on his side like this and what? <laughs> what in the world is wrong with you, Goliath? What are y'all doing sitting there? Don't be worried about him. Fight me. You don't know who I am. I'm Goliath. I'm the undefeated champion of the world. I've never lost a battle. I'm a skill warrior. You little wimp. I don't need my whip to take care of you. I tear you apart limb from limb with my bare hands and feed your flesh to the fowls. Then we're going to come get the rest of you like that. Well, wait a minute. Goliath, let me tell you something. You overgrown, uncircumcised, heathen Philistine blimp. There is a God who created you. He is the God of Israel. And today, everybody's going to know he is God. And that he is the most powerful. What do you, what do you and you have, since you have chosen to reject him, you have chosen to mock him, you have chosen to oppress him by oppressing his special people. Yes, yes. This God is going to deliver you into my hands. Yes. All right. And I'm going to cut off your head. Yes. And I'm going to give your flesh to the fowls of the air. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come and overrun y'all and feed all y'all mm. to the fowls of the air. Now I want you to know something about the life. If you'll read the text, the text will tell you that Goliath cursed David by the Philistine idol gods that they worship. But nowhere does the text say, declare, suggest, imply, or even hint that Goliath had faith in those gods. Goliath's faith was in Goliath, but if you read the text, Goliath says, I will tear you apart. That's you. you got a little That's flea you. to me. That's I don't even squash you like I squash a flea. Off my pet dog, hmm. and I'm going to tear you apart and throw you out to feed the birds. David, on the other hand, has faith. In David, God. that's it. There's no doubt in my mind that David was a skilled slingshot man. Man, yes. But David, as he told the king, he tells Goliath, "I'm a shepherd. I take care of sheep. And when I was taking care of the sheep." There was a bear came and then a lion came. There you, there you, there you. And God, who created all, delivered that bear and that sheep into my hand. And Goliath, I want you to know today that same God is going to deliver you into my hand. That's what I see. David's faith was in Goliath. Goliath's got some hands back there. Ah, ha, 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 you little wimp. You, that's mighty big talk for such a little bitty fella. You a little bitty flea. I'm going to tell you, ah, ha, 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 ha. just a laughing and a talking. And all the while, David was reaching in that bag and getting out that one smooth stone that he hated. He puts it in that sling. He slings it around. And when David let go of that sling, again, there's no doubt. Hmm. And my Holy Spirit sanctified, Holy Ghost filled mine. There's some invisible hands. And there's a song you sing when I was growing up called Invisible Hands. It says, pray and believe and help you receive from invisible hands. Then when David let go of that stone, them invisible hands reached out of heaven grabbed a hold of that stone and gave it the direction and the force that it needed to land where? In the line skull, right between his eyes. Right where a little fella hit the big bully and put him on the ground. And Goliath is laughing, mocking David, telling him what he's going to do, and all of a sudden Goliath goes, oh, what's this awful pain in my head? Why is there blood running down among my fingers? Why am I falling to the ground? That little Israelite went, well, I can tear him apart with my bare hands. Ooh, this awful pain in my head. It, 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 it was a little blood running down. Why am I falling on the ground? That little Israelite went, still standing. I, I, I take him apart with my hands. I'm Goliath. I'm undefeated. He said, thud, and there Goliath. Dead. Goliath was trying to be a hero. He wound up a zero. And it scarred him forever right down into his soul. Mm. He called Goliath. Woke up in the fiery flame. Yeah. Mm. And now instead of just one pain in his head, he got two. Reminded me of when I had the surgery many years ago. The doctor ordered me some medicine that didn't work. And so she ordered some shots. And I said, This ain't working either. Now instead of one pain, I got two. There's Goliath. And, and there's no doubt in my mind that Goliath was blaming God for Goliath being there in that fiery flame. And God said, No, no, no. I sent you a messenger. Yeah. I left you the message in all of the nations. And all the world that I created declares my existence and that I'm the only God there is. The nations. 
Let me throw this in at you and then I'm, I'm gonna wind it up. When I was on the Vito prison unit, the inmate came to me one night. He said, Mr. Pryor, I said, I'm gonna tell you that I was not a Christian when I got locked up. He said, after I got locked up and got down here, he said, I met a Christian. He kept trying to tell me I need to be a Christian. I tell him, no, you Christians believe three different things can be one of the same things, but there just ain't no way that can be. He said, this, this Christian introduced me to the incredible edible eggs. You got the egg shell, you got the egg yolk, and you got the egg white. Three different distinct things, yet it's one egg. He said, Mr. Pryor, I just couldn't argue with that egg, so I became a believer and became a Christian. Hmm. God knows who to put in your life. He knows how to turn people around. Goliath is blaming God, and God said, no, 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 I sent you my messenger. That's it, that's it, that's it. He told you about me. That's it. And you still refuse. That's it. So Goliath, you have no excuse. You down there forever, you tried to be a hero, you wound up a zero in the garden. Down forever. Now, who are you like? Are you like Goliath? Or are you like David? Where is your faith? What are you relying on? Have other made the work for me? Or did they change the job recently? But his faith was in a tub of water. His faith was in getting dipped in a tub of water. David's faith was not in that. That's David's faith was not in his slingshot. Not it. in his field of use. David's faith was in the God who created him. Mm. And that's what that we need to do. Son. David's faith was in the one who's going to come from his loins that later on in life and descend from him through a virgin named Mary. Mm -hmm. <coughs> David was looking to him. Yes, sir. And that's who we need to look to. That David you. needed a kinsman redeemer. He found that kinsman redeemer in God. Thank you. Yeah. Now here's the thing. God, though God created us, yet God was not related to us. That's why he had to come down in glory and enter the womb of a virgin and take on human flesh so he could become related to us. Now if you look back in the Old Testament, there was a law of kinsman redeemer. And if you look back in the Old Testament, you'll find there was a lady named Naomi. He was married to a guy named Elimelech. Mm -hmm. And they left Israel and went to Moab. And their sons married some Moabite women. And the man and the two son-in-laws died. And they only decided it was time to go back home. The daughter-in-law started out with her, but Orpah, when Ruth said, or when Naomi says to go back, she did. So Ruth said, not me. I'm not going to leave. She said, I won't even try. Wherever you go, I'm going. Wherever you That's stay, it. I'm going to stay. Your God will be my God and your people will be my people. I'm going to become one of you. Amen. I'm forsaking all of the idols and the false gods and all the false ways and wrong ways of Moab. And I'm going to come into a new living way. So, Naomi, don't, 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 don't try to talk me out of it. Because my mind's made up. I'm going over here with you. I'm going where the real God is. Yeah. And when they got there, Ruth went out leaning and then when she came in they always said well, who the field you in she said some man named Boaz she said oh Boaz oh, is a kinsman Boaz. to us and Ruth you need to be redeemed so you need to go talk to Boaz and tell him that you need to be redeemed and he'll redeem you so Ruth went to Boaz and Boaz said oh there's a kinsman that is nearer than I and he's got a first first option and every time I hear someone preach on this they always talk about Boaz and Ruth if anything at all it's just a mere mention about this nation near a kinsman but we didn't understand I have some kinsmen who are very nearer to me than Christ was in the flesh, but they were not able to redeem me. Thank you. And that's who this near kinsman represents, our relative, my dad. I'm not going to heaven because my dad's going to heaven. Thank he you. was not able to redeem me. I'm not preaching because he was a preacher. I'm preaching because this is what God called, called me to do. But well, we needed that kinsman redeemer. Yes, yes. And I didn't have one that was close enough that could redeem me. David needed that kinsman redeemer. He didn't have one close enough to redeem him. Right. So yeah. God sent him a kinsman redeemer. Through his loins, he went down and God wrapped himself in human flesh. Thank you. And he became related to us. And because he was sinless and perfect, he is able to redeem. Yeah. Yeah. And he will redeem those who will come and be willing to be redeemed. Yes. An interesting word about the word redeem. The English word redeem means to buy back. But in 1 Peter chapter 1, the word translated redeem, the word that Peter used, means for a free man to go down to the slave market and pay a ransom price for the slave. And where slavery has existed, does exist or exist, there are two prices can be paid for a slave. The sale price and the ransom price. When the sale price is paid by the free man, the slave remains a slave. But 
when the free man pays the ransom price, he takes that slave out of the slave market, and that slave is set free, and set so free that that slave can never, ever, under any circumstance or for any reason, be put back into slavery. You're free from then on. Yeah. Uh, Christ went yeah. and became our kinsman redeemer, and he paid the highest ransom price that was ever paid for a slave. Hmm. He gave his life. Yeah. He shed his blood. Amen. And I thank God that the story didn't end with that, just the payment of sin debt, but that after the, on the third day morning before the sun came uh, up, he rose up out of that grave victorious over death, sin, hell, and the grave. Amen. Jesus, my kinsman and redeemer. Thank you, he is my high priest. Yeah. He is my sacrificial lamb. Amen. He is the one who created me. He is the one who redeemed me back to himself. He is the one who brought me to where I am today. God is everything I need. Jesus is everything I need. Because yes, everything he I need, he supplies. And we still try to do things our way. Hmm. We still want to be the hero. And here's what I'm saying. If you want to be a hero, don't try to be one. Be like David. Give your heart and life to God. Follow him and stay with him and defend God and his people. And I guarantee you, God will lift you up. Amen. For those who try to lift themselves up will be knocked down. But not only is Jesus my kinsman and redeemer, my high priest, my sacrificial lamb, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is my provider. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the prayer for 10,000 to my soul. He is everything, my all in all. He is the sheepfold. He is the door to the sheepfold. He is the great shepherd. He is the great I am. He is my keeper. He's my guide. And that's enough. Amen. Now, what is he to you? Who are you relying on? Or what are you relying on to take you to heaven? And I'm closing with this. Years ago, I met a preacher, a man who claimed to be a preacher, a Baptist preacher anyway. He kept telling me that he didn't know if he was going to heaven or not. I said, what do you mean you don't know? The Bible says you can know. The Bible says if you believe in Christ, you're a child of God. And you have a home in heaven. That's in Romans chapter 8. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And I took you through that. I took you through Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 4, oh, heaven, Romans right. chapter 6, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 11, chapter 10, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and 10, Titus 3 and 5. And then I took you to 1 John, where John writes, My little children, these things I write so that you may know. And I told him, I did some research and found the English phrase may know is only one word in the Greek. And that Greek word that John used means to know beyond any shadow of a doubt. So if you don't know, you need to examine your relationship. What is your relationship with God? Does Amen. You know, right now, beyond any shadow of doubt, when you leave this walk of life, you're going to spend eternity in heaven. Don't try to do it your way. Amen. Don't try to do it yourself. Amen. Let God do it through you, and then you'll be made to what God will do. The doors are open. First to the kingdom of God is in the church. And if you do not know, you can. Because the Bible says you can. Don't try to be a hero, because if you do, you're going to wind up like a lie. His lie is so scarred forever. Because he rejected the God's amazing. David, however, was lifted up from the physical sheep of gold to being king of the nation of Israel. And one thing that always struck me about David, when David messed up, he fessed up. Amen. And David never tried to play the blame game. We started way back in the garden to have blaming Eve and he blaming the serpent. David didn't do that. Every time David messed up, David said, don't judge that person. Don't judge the sheep. Don't judge that man. I said I'm there to count the people. Judge him because I'm the one. He just did what I told him to do. They're not responsible for that. God, I am. And God honors that request. He withheld judgment from those that did what David said. He judged David. But David always came back. He said, God, I'll repent. I'm sorry. That's what we need to do. God will lift us up. He will restore us. He did that of restoration. Because God did not demonstrate his power man, on a self clean unbroken vessel. But a vessel that is dirty, a vessel that is broken, that yields itself to the master potter, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, God can demonstrate his power. And he will demonstrate it. He will restore that person. And make you brand new. Make you like you were never broken. Will you come? Will you do it today? If you're out there on Facebook, think about what your relationship is with God today. Do you have that relationship?
Oh! 
Savior Jesus Christ. Did not our hearts burn within? Amen. 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 Trying to be a hero. Like End up with a zero and what is it scarred all the way down to the soul? Lord have mercy, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Elder Pryor and uh, this word that he has brought and shared with us on today. Amen. Uh, we're grateful to God to to have back with us in our presence this morning. Our announcing clerk. Amen. So she's gonna bring everybody up to Part, amen, and up to date. And you see that we're trying to, to, to be safe, amen. Yeah. We realize that we have an issue going on in the society, the world that we live in, that there's something going on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen. I don't mind putting no mask on. Matter of fact, I, I, I've come to the conclusion that that is a part of my dress attire now. Amen. When I walk outside, I don't mind putting it on. Amen. And uh, we all need to go ahead on and just get in the habit. Get in the habit. Amen. I know that some of us, amen, sometimes it, our ladies, our young ladies, amen, it irritates our face. Amen. It messes with, uh, make y'all so pretty and hide half of your pretty look. Amen. I can't see but my wife and eyes, no, you know, and, <laughs> you know, you don't know, you don't know who the robbers are no more. Everybody wearing masks, Amen. So we just have to be praying, praying up, Amen. Trust God to get us through these trying times, Amen. Sister West is going to come, Amen. Give God a hand of praise for her. Zoom the camera in on over there, cameraman, so we can get her right on on our TV station, Amen. They brought you. Matthew 5 and 16. To our First Lady, 
Vernon Archie. It takes a special person to be a pastor's wife, for it's not an easy task or a simple way of life. The phone often rings at dinner time. Vacations, they are few. With so many needs in our church, there's always lots to do. When people need a helping hand, on you they can depend. For you always try to do your best to be a faithful friend. So you will always know you're a special gift from God who is appreciated so. Thank you, Sister Archie. Amen. 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 Pastor Archie, a warm thanks for all you've done in the large service. You have made yourself available for all God's people. You are indeed a reflection of God's love, and we want you to know how very much we appreciate you. May you be blessed for everything that you've done, everything that you do, and everything that you will do in God's name. We love you both, your brothers and sisters at Greater New Hope Baptist Church. The birthdays for August 2020, Barry Shepherd on the 5th, Ashley Ford on the 6th, Kiaja Colbert on the 8th, Catherine Campbell on the 14th, <laughs> Ella Campbell on the 15th, Gussie Davis on the 16th, Justin Earls on the 16th, Chris Williams the 18th, Regina Stredick on the 27th, Alonia Archie the 31st, Waquavius Colbert on the 31st. On behalf of the Great New Hope Baptist Church, we want to wish each and every one of you a happy and a good <coughs> birthday. These have been your announcements. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Webb. Yes, Amen. Thank you so much for, Amen, taking time out to be a part of us and bring us up to date. Amen. Ah, uh, we thank God. We just have so much to thank Him for. Amen. We couldn't have done it without God, first of all, and the love of God's people. Amen. Come on, say amen, y'all. I said we could not have made it this far. I couldn't have been here 35 years without the love of God, first of all, dwelling on the heart of God's people. Come on, say amen. I'm talking about y'all. Amen. I'm talking about great little hope and, and, and those that are, are watching us right now. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. It's been, amen. We, we, God has brought us through some trying times. Yeah, yeah. Lord, have mercy if I tell you we've been through some trying times. We've been flooded. Yeah. Come on, somebody help me. Yeah. Amen. God has, now we're in a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And, and God is still bringing us through it. But never would he leave us. No. Nor would he forsake us. Amen. I, 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 I stand on it. I believe it. I'm going to my grave believing it. That 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 David said, I like David, David confirmed him. He said, I've been young, yes, but now I'm old. Yeah, all right. But yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That let me know that no matter what comes, God gonna take care of me. Yeah. Yes, God gonna take care of you. God gonna take care of his people. Amen. And we owe him a praise. Amen. Amen. Uh, those that uh, the time is going to come. Amen. It's, it's, it's on its way. It's around the corner that, that we're going to be able to come back together yeah. Amen. as a family here. Amen. 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 The, the day is coming. Amen. amen. God already got it on his calendar, we don't know, amen, when the storm going to lighten up to where we can, but we know God is in control, and, oh, yeah. and the day going to come that we'll all be able to come together yeah, yeah. in this room and celebrate and give praises to God. I, I tell you, I hope it ain't no standing room in here. See, God got to let some stuff come in our lives sometimes. Yeah. Amen. You know, cause, cause sometimes we, we hard-headed, we rebellious, we, we stiff-necked. We don't listen to what God has to say. So God has to let some things come in our lives. Sometimes he got to let us hit rock bottom before we realize he's a rock at the bottom. Yes, sir. Amen. So we want to just thank God. Thank God for our tribulation. 
Amen. Because God is, is, is going to bring us through these days as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me apologize to our praise team. Our praise team <laughs> was struggling. We were struggling. We got a new system this morning. And we have an issue with our plug, but we're going to get that resolved up here, y'all. So your mics won't cut off on you no more. Amen. Amen. The devil is alive. <laughs> Amen. We claim the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I had a couple of things I wanted to say. I may have covered them already. Amen. But let us continue in prayer. I will be gone for two weeks. Amen. 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 Say amen. Somebody please say amen. amen. Somebody amen. please say amen. I got two behind me. Pastor going on vacation for a couple of weeks. Amen. amen. And I'm debating on and I was riding down the highway the other day, little mama, and, and them stripes just started looking good to me. I just wanted to see them go zip, 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 zip. You know what I'm talking about? You, you know, with white stripes on the road. You know, zip, zip, just, you know, you, amen. I'm praying on it. I'm praying on it, Sister West. I'm praying on it. I'm still praying on it. Amen. I, 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 you know, I just, you know, I know God is going to keep us wherever we are, Sam. God's going to take care of us. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't going to hear this Bob or nothing right there. Yeah, y'all <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. It's God going to keep us. Amen. Uh, we just going to keep trusting in him that he will. Amen. Minister Ford will be conducting our worship. Amen. Amen. We need you to continue to support, be a part. Amen. Amen. The praise team is going to be here to support him. Amen. And, and we're going to just, you know, look forward to having a good time. And, and I will be back the first Sunday in September, the Lord's willing. Amen. And the rapture had not come. Amen. And as Sister Thunder said, that the boss man is in a good mood. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to give, we don't give the benediction. So y'all can just go ahead and stand up and start fellowshipping. Amen. Uh, we, 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 we not going to give the benediction. We, there ain't no benediction. Because we get open, the doors are open all day, all night. As a matter of fact, we're going out on that. Give me some, Ray. Give me a seat card over there, brother Ray. Matter of fact, y'all, we, we going out on that one. All day. And all night. Come on, y'all. Y'all know the one I'm talking about. As soon as I hear this note over here, I'm going to hit it. Oh, 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 night. Come on, that's the one. Oh, babe. Come on, y'all do it. Oh, babe. Oh, babe. Y'all go get on Star Fellowship for that night.